Hi everyone, welcome to Remote Learning 3.4, Mooring Analysis a Case Study. So for this uh, remote learning, we'll be analyzing the mooring loads of a single static cantonary line and how we can size up the mooring chain required. And uh, we'll be using the cantonary line equation as you can see from Mel. So this is the uh, diagram which we are familiar with from the previous uh, exercises and again we'll be using the five equations from the total footprint at the top uh, down to vertical force at the valid V at the bottom and for this round we'll be also look using the table from mooring chain proof load which is extracted from the Anchor Manual 2010, page 147. Over this table, you'll see that uh, there are various types of chain, R4, RQ4, R3S, R3, RQ3, Tag API. They have the proof load as well as the breaking load. Proof load means the safe working load, while breaking load means the ultimate tensile strength as well as there's this portion on the weight of the chain and there are the various uh, diameters indicated on the leftmost column and the various forces and unit weights on the right okay let's look at assignment 2c which is uh, the question for today basically we'll be looking at one uh, mooring chain for this exercise so if you look at this exercise further down and a flotel was designed to operate in the water depth of 120 meters and is kept in station using an eight point spread equispace space mooring system. For design purpose, the mooring chains used are of 50 mm diameter R3S stud chain, which is derived from the anchor manual with a proof load of 1,800 kN and a unit weight of 55 kg per meter. The safety factor of 3 is to be assumed. So determine the operating tensile load of the chain for this instance. Before that, let me just explain what is a flotel and some of the terminologies in this paragraph. A flotel essentially is a semi-submersible platform that is an accommodation for offshore operators working on the rigs. And an eight-point spread equispace space mooring system refers to how the platform is in position. So essentially there are eight lines that is holding the platform per se. And uh, regarding the proof load, is similar to the safe working load principle for a particular material. So let's look at this chart, a load against the extension of the material. So at a certain load where we hang from a chain, the material will go through certain extension or certain loading. And pretty much for steel, it will be a linear relationship meaning a proportional increase for every unit extension the load there will be some increase and at some point the material will go through plastic deformation so at this point the system will will have this kind of extension with increasing a load and then after which it will go through ultimate tensile um, load and then it will basically break off for the material so this point before the plastic definition this is the proof load oops not too sure why it jumped Let me just uh, reverse a bit. Okay. So this portion is the proof load 
of the material and then after which beyond this load it will go into plastic deformation and finally before breaking off it will have this uh, ultimate tensile load which is actually equals to the breaking load the material and beyond this point the material will break okay so this is the proof load concept let's go back to the question so determine the operating tensile load for the chain so in this case what would be the safe working load for this chain indicated in this question is indicated as 1800 kilonewtons from the r3s and 50 mm diameter start chain so this is the proof load of the chain so let me just write down the proof load of the chain is 1800 kilo newtons and if let's say i don't give you proof load and the unit weight where can i get this from it's from the table in mel or in the assignment so let's say 50 mm we look at 50 mm which is down over here oh, jumping a bit so Fifty mm. Let's look at the fifty mm. So if you look at R three S fifty mm, the proof load is thousand eight hundred. You can see over on my mouse, and the unit weight. If you look across, for start fifty five and for startless fifty kilograms per meters. So if you look at the question again, that's how I get this fifty five kilograms and thousand eight hundred kilonewtons. So in the test or assessment, you'll be required to look up the table to get these numbers. All right, so let's come back to A again. A proof load of 1,800 kilonewtons. So if we look up, uh, how do we get the operating tensile load? The operating load would actually take into account the safety factor indicated here all right safety factor indicated okay and that would mean the operating oh, something is continue uh, after the technical break trying to sort out some technical issue on this one note all right so let's continue uh, Safety factor of three, all right, as underlined. And uh, now we want to look at the operating load. So the operating load, essentially, is my proof load divided by my safety factor. So my operating load should be less than the proof load or the safe working load, right? Because beyond 1800, it will be, the chain would undergo plastic deformation. So in this case, 1800 kilonewtons divided by 3, and that would give me 600 kilonewtons. And we need to express the answer in kilograms, and that would require me to convert to kilogram force and how do I do that I divide by the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 so in this case 600 is in kilonewtons so I need to multiply by 1000 newtons over 9.81 meters per second and that would give me 
the value in kilograms and in this case it will give me 61162 kilogram and that will be the operating tensile load for this question that is for part a for part b based on this operating load of the chain determine the design maximum horizontal force th that the chain was sized to take this environmental load okay so let's uh, uh, calculate this horizontal force th so essentially this uh, top is equals to my t in the set of equations here so if you look at the set of equations here my top is equals to the tension t in the equation number four and i'm supposed to find th so then th would then be equals to t minus w h where w is the unit weight and h is the water depth in this case uh, my t as calculated above is 61162 and my w from the table or given above is 55 kilogram per unit length and the water depth is 120 meters all right and that would give me five four five six two kilogram so this is the design maximum horizontal force for my chain so that's the answer for part B. Let's look at part C, D, and E together. So for part C, you'll be required to use the various values to substitute into the equation. And I'll, this will be done as an exercise on your own. I'll provide you the final answer, which is 502.5 meters. Please do it at your own time. For vertical load, again, we'll use the uh, given formula and again please do it at your own time i'll provide the final answer which is 27637 kilograms and for the horizontal distance x this is 43 meters and please do it at your own time let's proceed to f g and h for f we're required to find the total footprint again you don't have to use the expression earlier on and in this case let me give you the answer which is um, 530.7 meters and uh, finally the holding force which i will do it in the next uh, exercise because i need to explain what a holding force is Okay, let's go back to E again. Okay, E I've given you as 483. Okay, I just want to confirm this. All right, hope you will have a good time working out the parts C, D, E, F, and G. The next video will talk about H. Thank you so much.